Hi Sagittarius, welcome to your January and February 2018 Bliss Report. It's Raina here. I actually laid out this uh, spread last night with my new Wild, the uh, Wild Unknown Tarot deck. And I, um, I had to stop it last night and, and uh, YouTube doesn't allow merging of files anymore. So I decided to start all over again and as I sat down I was like, Whose reading is this? And I realized it, it, it is yours because I was looking to see which signs I haven't done yet. And uh, I just want to show you the back of this tarot deck. It's really a cool one. I'm also going to pick a couple of cards. Uh, one is an oracle card called um, Keepers of the Light and the other one is an Akashic tarot card. But I wanted to just uh, explain this type of reading. It's a way to find messages that relate to you following your bliss, whatever that is. And it doesn't have to be work related or, you know, like career related or anything like that. It could just be something that you've always wanted to do. Maybe you want to travel or you want to, I don't know, um, have a an or mini organic farm, whatever it is that you want. Um, let's see if we can find some messages that will resonate with you. So I'm going to pick one from the Keepers of the Light, Lady Portia. And let me get, I'm just going to cut this deck like this and pick this one. I think I got this for another, yeah, I got this for another sign. <laughs> it's funny how I always get the same cards over and over again. Okay, I'm going to start with the um, tarot portion of this. <clears throat> and I'm still getting used to this deck, but because I know what the meaning of the cards are, even if it doesn't seem like it corresponds to my typical depictions of them, I can still uh, interpret them. And we have here, at the, as the heart of the matter, the Daughter of Cups, which is the Page of Cups energy for January and February. Now, as I record this, January is almost in the can. So we're looking at uh, the whole month of February and just a little bit of January. The Page of Cups is a card of innocence and kind of a new emotional state. And I like this card. To me, it's kind of similar to the Fool card in the Major Arcana in the sense that we're keeping our options open, we're keeping our hearts open uh, like a newborn babe. For some people there are issues swirling around that involve um, perhaps a lack of discrimination about something and that is not necessarily a good thing. So just um, use it as a positive influence because I'm not going to do a relationship reading, but a lot of times when I get that card in relationship matters, it can be that the person is rather gullible and they're not questioning enough. And yet the, uh, the flip side of this is being very creative and uh, that sense of trusting the universe, I think, can really serve people well. Um, sometimes and we don't have to be fear-based that's true the, this is um, you know pages connect with children and that's why I say the daughter of cups I believe is the page of cups and so then the knight of cups is the sun because um, this is a feminine energy and when you see children they don't question. They just assume that everything's going to work out all right. And sometimes we need to be like that. I think Sagittarians tend to be like that in general, but um, maybe now is especially important. Maybe there are some things that happen in January and February that seem to counter that and make you question whether everything really is going to be okay. And you have to keep reminding yourself that the universe does have your back. The past influence is connected to the Six of Swords. And um, 
a lot of you may have um, heard even with other astrologers about Sagittarius is that they're going to move um, in 2018 and even back in 2017 they were talking about this and this was primarily because um, Pisces is the fourth house for Sagittarius home and family and there were some triggers to that house that kind of uh, in uh, 2017 there was a solar eclipse and so in that period of time through the spring and fall people may have uh, moved last year <clears throat> excuse me and again this year um, there may be people who have already moved or even though this is the past position there may be thoughts about moving. The Six of Swords is also a card that relates to wanting to um, embrace peace in your life and this could be locational peace. In other words if you're living in an area that is very noisy and you want to get in touch with nature more and be more out of the uh, an urban environment or just even a suburban environment can be noisy a lot of times and you just crave that communing with nature and all that stuff um, the number six connects with nurturing peace and also uh, family and um, but especially I would say harmony and it's it's connected to the the planet Venus so that's something that may have been kicking around in your mind you may have actually acted on it and the spiritual message is related to the five of swords and so for some people they have to come to terms with something something that another person has done or said to you that has been um, hurtful, slanderous, and just upsetting in some way. And you may even feel like, uh, you know, going back to that Daughter of Cups or Page of Cups, you may even feel like a fool because of some, let's say this was on the job, and maybe you had coworkers who really were kind of conspiring against you and you thought they were your best friends and something uh, transpired that made you aware of the fact that they they were uh, snakes in the grass and it's very easy to get um, disillusioned and I think and you know being a Sagittarian myself I, I think that's one of the most um, disappointing things is when people are um, duplicitous you know when they are sneaky when they are dishonest and they make it look like they really are on your side the five of swords is a card of that kind of behavior and as a spiritual message next to the daughter of cups it can be about being more discerning and really questioning sometimes when people are overly flattering and you know you may just get lulled into this false sense of security getting your ego stroked and meanwhile somebody's trying to get one over on you not talking about paranoia but we have to always t take stock in our uh, choices in how we danced with this other person and that way you don't feel like as much of a victim you feel like there are there were things you could have done differently and there's nothing wrong with with uh, acknowledging that because that's how you grow and that's how you learn from your mistakes and so what crosses you is connected to the ten of pentacles so for some of you, you may feel like money at this time, um, I'm talking about affluence, I'm not talking about day-to-day -day money, 
but there's some kind of a thing, there may even be inheritance issues that are kind of um, creeping up. And, and that's, that could be connected to that card as well. You know, I didn't, I didn't get into that. There may be some kind of a family matter that is um, still festering in some way. Maybe this is something that happened a few years ago that still you haven't kind of come to terms with mentally. But for other people, this could be something that's happening right now, and that may be what, um, why you, you've been naive about a situation. It might not have anything to do with work. It might have been family. And um, my standard thing with that is it depends on the situation, obviously, but I went through something similar, and I felt like I was wronged, but then in the 11th hour, I decided to just drop it and let it go. Because I realized that if someone, even if the person was very close to me, if they did not give me uh, a certain amount of money and they gave somebody else more, that was, what, that was their decision. And I may think it's unfair. I may think that there were other uh, extenuating circumstances, but I did not want to have to immerse myself in that anymore. I didn't have it in me. And I wanted to move on with my life, really. So I just let it go. And it was really weird because it felt right, even though at first I was like thinking that I was just giving up. But obviously, there may be some people where it's actually, whoa, <laughs> what you must do. Maybe, the, maybe um, you've allowed yourself to be pushed around long enough. And so I wouldn't make uh, any kind of broad pronouncements about this particular card, but just to say that it may be, there may be a holdup with something related to family money, or it could even be in, like if you're getting divorced, um, you may be splitting up some kind of, um, I don't know what you call it when it's with your um, ex-spouse, like an estate, is that called an estate? I don't know but you may be dividing things and it's degenerating into a, um, a power clash and it's being used as some kind of a manipulation. Maybe not on your part, but you don't have to um, play along with that if you don't want to. You can choose peace, which is what that card represents. Okay, and... Um, <laughs> Oh, that, that really, like, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> the Four of Swords. What the heck? Has he got a third eye? <laughs> uh, a lamb with a third eye. That's the, that's the Four of Swords. Perfectly <laughs> makes sense. But actually, I love these illustrations. Um, the Four of Swords is a card of reflection. So it's asking you to take a breather. It could even be physical rejuvenation where you go to bed earlier and you talk less to other people and you kind of keep your own counsel. And, you know, swords relate to communication, including thought. With the number four, four is a number of structure. So it's really about structuring your life so that your thoughts work for you, not against you. And the way that we do that, meditation is a way to keep our thoughts from kind of taking over. And that's why they say stopping the mind. <clears throat> and that helps to make people um, more relaxed and less frenetic in their, you know, like people who think too much and then they are just um, very uptight all the time. And the outcome is the world card, and this is about ending a cycle, finishing up old business. I like to see that card because it really tells me that Sagittarians can make a lot of progress during this time. Uh, the last card of the Major Arcana, and a whole new cycle, letting go of the past, and making peace with the past. <clears throat> okay, 
So let's talk about these two cards. I'm going to start with the Akashic. Um, let me get out my little booklet. I got so many decks now that they're all on the side lines here. This is number 13. It says, the Buddha prepares. The Buddha sits meditating. The hills in the background are dotted with other people meditating and patiently waiting for him to speak, but he won't move a muscle until he is ready. This card shows a time of inner preparation, and I would say even this Four of Swords is like that, before action. Before you can reach outside yourself, you must reach within to find your power, your purpose, and your direction. This period of time may feel a little like waiting, and it appears so in your exterior life, because some points of action seem to be at a standstill. Really, though, you're just taking the time that you require to prepare and to truly step into your power. Don't be in a hurry. The time to act is coming, and when it's here, your strength will be absolute. I was just watching... Um, a video just at the very beginning um, and they were talking about something similar about this that this is a period of um, maybe in action for not just Sagittarians but for all of us as a collective so um, I don't know if that feels true for anybody but I just wanted to mention that and then we have here Lady Portia Divine Order the saying underneath says, do what you feel is right, an important lesson is unfolding. This powerful goddess is a figure of justice and peace. <laughs> so when I got these cards, I mean, this is a card of peace, and we could say justice. Um, well, I was just kind of speculating about what may be going on with the Ten of Pentacles. She brings order and opportunity to every experience. As a lord of karma, she also regulates the cause, the law of cause and effect. She helps us recognize the impact of our judgments, choices, and actions on ourselves and the world. She is the twin flame of Saint Germain, Germain so is strongly connected to the violet flame energy. Together, these twin flames can work as overseers of legal situations. There you go. Justice is an energy that's about honoring everyone involved rather than punishing bad behavior. Lady Portia helps us to do what is right morally and spiritually for our soul's growth. Right now, a call for justice is being brought into your space. Even if this means you will, quote, lose out, there really is no loss in the highest state of truth. Act from the heart, see the other person's point of view, and surrender your pride so that you are coming from a loving space. If you made choices that weren't the highest good, admit it. Through this honesty, you're releasing any karmic bonds or anchors of fear from your energy. Take the time to learn from the situation. And if you are involved in any legal issues, know that Lady Portia and the Angels of Justice are gathering around to honor everyone involved. And like I said, it's not... Um, going to be the same for each person. I was just uh, giving my own experience because I, you know, this, to me, this happened just last year, actually, come to think of it. Gosh, it's amazing. I think it was last year. Yeah, it was last year. And was it last year? Yeah, I can't, it's weird. It seems like it was longer than a year ago, but then on the other hand, it seems like it was something that did just happen. And I really, I felt for a while I was like on my, you know, moral high ground. And I was just like chomping at the bit. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And as I started looking for lawyers and I wanted somebody that would work pro bono and stuff like that, I began to run into brick walls. People wouldn't return my calls. And I actually went down to the law library, downtown Chicago, was looking stuff up myself. The people there 
Um, they said they would help with certain things. I couldn't get anyone. I couldn't get any help, and I didn't want to invest any money in it because I had no idea if I would ever see that money again. And I really, at that time, I didn't have the money to go hire a lawyer. Um, lawyers are expensive, so um, I felt I felt like that I, I really didn't have many options, but I still probably could have done something. I just decided to let it go and accept what was. And I felt peace pretty immediately. Um, it, it didn't come without just a little twinge of regret, of course, but I'm just here to tell you that Sometimes peace is worth so much more than um, a lot of um, antagonistic energy. And as a matter of fact, you know, sometimes people have a bitter legal fight. And when all is said and done, even if they win the judgment with the uh, lawyer fees and everything, they might not emerge with much of anything. But if they are vengeful and they can keep something from somebody else, they may feel that sense of satisfaction. And interestingly, the Five of Swords is also a card of empty victory. So, you know, you win the, uh, you win the battle, but you lose the war. And the war is a moral war. Uh, and so just keep that in mind as you go through your life. And maybe it's a metaphor. Maybe it's not an actual legal battle. Maybe you're um, just angry at somebody who did you wrong and um, maybe it's time to let that go and forgive them. Let them off the hook in your mind. Even if they really did something nasty. Um, let them, let it, uh, let it out of your, um, you know, let, you know, take them off of your, you know, what list and just wish them the best. That doesn't mean you have to have contact with them, but you don't have to hate them. So um, anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this. If you'd like a private reading, I have different types, so please click on the link below. My website is rainamoonastrology.com. Take care. Bye.